dare you come barging in here starting fights. I don't care what your problems are, there's no need for utter rudeness. Now go in the house and get dried off, and as soon as Fiona comes back, I want you out. Terry's turned up, has he? The fight took place in the pool, would you believe? Oh, no. Oh, Barbara, I'm so sorry. All right, it's not your fault, but I'm furious with him. Oh, I don't blame you. I'll have a piece of him myself, but his eyes, the chlorine? Well, I think they've been stinging, but I'm sure they'll be fine. You have a worse problem on your hands. Well, I'll talk about it later. These are fresh from the dryer. If you need an iron, Fiona knows where everything is. Thank you. I'm sorry if I cause trouble with your friends. But I'm not apologizing for having a go at John. He asked for it. When are you going to grow up? I said, I'm sorry. Oh. And in your crazy way of looking at things, that's supposed to make it all right. Well, it doesn't. Well, it's all I can say. I didn't think, OK? No, you most certainly didn't. Apart from anything else, what about your eyes? Oh, they're fine. Oh, so you're the doctor now, are you? And you don't have to get smart, either. I'm trying to be sensible. And you're treating me like a kid. You're behaving like one. <sighs> Look, you have just had your bandages off. Now, I think the most sensible thing we could do is get you to a hospital for a checkup. <sighs> oh, no. I've had enough of that place to last me a lifetime. I'm going home. If there are any problems, I'll see a doc there. <sighs> the specialists are here in Sydney. I don't care. I'm going home. All right. All right. I have your plane ticket here in my bag. Well, I can hitch back. Look, I have had your nonsense up to here. Now, you are going to fly home like I originally planned, and the first thing you're going to do is see a doctor and hope to goodness he doesn't put you back into hospital. I can see fine. Oh, no thanks to your stupidity. The ironing room is through there. Now, go and make yourself presentable for the flight. We'll leave in ten minutes. What did I say when I rang from the hospital? I did everything I could. I'm not going to stand there and let him hit me. But what about his eyes? I don't care about his eyes. Why should I? It's the last thing he was worrying about. I expected a bit more from you, I suppose. Don't blame me because you've got a nitwit for a son. The less you have to do with him, the better, I reckon. That's up to me to decide. Yeah. Well, the sooner you get over your hang-ups about him, the happier I'll be. I didn't come for advice, Johnny. No, oh, you came here to have a go at me. Well, I'm not taking it, Fiona. I've had a gut full of Terry and the whole damn mess. It's changed you, you know. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. The worst thing is you can't even see it. I'm too old to be lectured by you, Johnny. Of course you've changed. You put him ahead of everyone now. All your friends take second place to a rapist. Whatever he is, he's my son. And I'm the same as I ever was. You think so? You don't even remember what day it is, do you? So worried about your precious Terry. too much traveling involved in this job. Oh, you'll thrive on it once you get into the swing of things. Besides, it gives you a break from me. That's a trouble. I missed you. One night. Oh. Can I get you a drink? I'll get it. That's uh, all right. You want one? No, not for me, thanks. What's that? The answer to all our troubles. Now, I know what you said before you went away, but... Well, you know how impulsive I am, and it's a good thing I was. I haven't a clue what you're talking about. I've got Helen on tape admitting that you're Andrew's father. Now, that's all the evidence we need to contest the will. How did you get it? Darling, don't be angry with me, please. I just wanted to help. How did you get the tape? I went to see her. I had this pocket recorder in my handbag. 
did I say before I left? Darling, I know, but I, I couldn't just sit around and do nothing. And this tape is the difference between us scrimping and saving for the rest of our lives and being very comfortably off. You know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. It's the last damn straw. That's what it is. I told you, you must not on any account go near Helen. What are you doing? Did I say that or didn't I? Oh, stop it, for did God's sake. Did I say that? Stephen, you're hurting my arm. Yes, you told me not to go near Helen. Now let go my arm. So you stayed true to form and did exactly what you wanted to. What sort of idiot did you take me for? How many times have you smiled and promised not to do something and then gone behind my back and done it anyway? I don't know what you're getting so hysterical about. My pride, that's what I'm getting hysterical about. I have done everything I could to keep it and go on loving you. I put up with your tantrum at Wombai when you found out about Andrew. I put up with you going to see him without my knowledge, your total lack of sympathy for my worries about the new job, your whole mercenary attitude. Well, I've had it. I did it. I'm not listening to any more apologies, any more promises. I am getting out while I still have a little self-esteem. But you're blowing the whole thing out of proportion. The fact that you think so proves we have a problem. I'll be talking to Malcolm about divorce. You can't be serious. Believe me, this time I am. She's just left me her car to go shopping. Oh. You may as well know. Everyone else will soon enough. I've left, Patricia. She's pushed me too far, Barb. I'm not backing down this time. I believe that when I see it. Well, you can't blame me for being dubious. What about the last time? That tiff over Andrew. There was talk of divorce then. No, this is different. If you say so. You know I'd be the first to cheer if you finally got her out of your system. But this is such a trivial thing to get excited about. That's no, the principle of the thing. Of course I'm not happy about her going to see Andrew's mother, but if that's all it was, it'd be no problem. But it's the last in a whole string of things. I can't live with a woman who treats me as a joke. Oh, that's pretty much her style. Gordon did for years. Oh, more fool him. I'm sorry, I'm not criticising. I know. Well, we did warn you. We learn by our mistakes. So what happens when you cool down? I mean, it feels like the end of the world now, but later on, tonight, tomorrow morning, when she rings, and she will, what are you going to do about it then? Dig my heels in. But you're still in love with her. Even I can see that. I'll make myself stop loving her. That's over. Me too. I was beginning to think we weren't going to make it. <laughs> I love coming here. So relaxing. Oh, remind me to ring John after we get the hellos out of the way. I want to wish you a happy birthday to him. Yeah, sure. Hey, Tony. How you doing? Uh, you took your time getting up here? You know me, slow as a wet week. We decided to stay at the motel last night. Make a holiday of the trip too. Oh, well, you're mad not to. Um, Mum's out the back getting the washing. I'll take that still over Alan Pesco first. Get that out of the way. Uh -huh. oh, what stuff, sir? I got in touch with him on the road. It hit me that I might have been able to pick up some stuff for him. Well, you want a hand unloading it? No, you should have plenty of blokes to help. I'll bring the suitcase in when I get back. Mum uh, cooked a special cake for Arvo tea. I reckon she'll be running around after you now that you're here. She, um... She was pretty bad about you being forced to leave Melbourne. Oh, silly. Yeah, well, you try telling her that. 
I um, feel pretty bad about it myself. Tony. Well, it's because of us that you had... Just because your father got out of jail, we can't blame you. Now stop it. Yeah. The main thing is you don't have any more troubles because of it, eh? Well, that's the main thing. <laughs> She'll have to give me the recipe. Tony's favourite. Mm. I can believe that. Oh, my God. Put the knife down. How did you find us? I said, put the knife down. And now call the others in. Call the others in. Tony, Alice, would you come in here, please? Oh, I'm just waiting for the kettle to boil. Now. Uh, it's important. You better not have dropped the cake or Mum will... Oh, hell. Get in. What happened? Don't tell me that you did... Sit down, Alice. Both of you two, sit down. Dad. I said sit! Crazy, you know that? Told you to shut your face, boy. I'm not gonna tell you again. You won't kill us. You'd never get away with it. You know you wouldn't. They'd have to catch me first, wouldn't they? <laughs> of course they'll catch you. You're not that thick, are you? I'm smart enough to put you in your place, boy. Well, what do you reckon you're Please, gonna do? Please, Joe. Got it all wrong, you know. I don't reckon I have. The same goes for you. Shut your mouth, Alice. How did you find us? I was in the back of your truck when you left Melbourne. Thanks for uh, getting me past the roadblocks. I pinched a car after that and followed you. He's taking his time, isn't he? What are you going to do when David gets here? I assume Stephen's there. Could I speak to him, please? I'll see if I can find him, Patricia. Probably right next to you. Having a field day ripping me apart. Oh, I think you've done enough of that yourself. What, do you want to speak to her? It's your marriage. No, I don't. Did you hear that? He's behaving like a spoiled child. Tell him to expect me. Terry get off all right? Yes. I just hope he has the sense to go and see a doctor as soon as he arrives. Well, I'm sorry I missed you before you left for the airport. I'm afraid you have a problem on your hands. 
I think it's one you're not meant to know about. Yes, hello, Barbara Hamilton. Barbara, Matt Kennedy. I'm trying to get on to Fiona Thompson. There's no answer at the flat. Well, she's standing right next to me, actually. How are you? Oh, you know, coping. I'm glad to hear it. It's Matt Kennedy. Huh? Hello, Matt. What can I do for you? Um, I was just wondering how I went with Jill. I don't understand. Didn't she come to see you? Not to my knowledge. Um, just a minute. Did Jill call to see me while I was out? That's what I was going to tell you. Yes, she was here during the fight. She didn't stay very long and she left very upset. Uh, she wanted to speak to me? Mm-hmm, but I think the brewer half frightened her away. Uh, Matt, uh, she's been and gone. Uh, how is it you're involved? I got talking to her, Patricia's. She's very confused. You can say that again. Look, um, I don't mean to be nosy, but what did Barbara mean by brew ha, -ha? In the present state of mind, the last thing she needs is another upset. There was a fight. How much has Jill told you? A lot. Who was fighting? John Palmer and Terry Hansen, as she told you about him. She certainly did. Look, I've got a plane to catch, a conference in Brisbane. If you've got any idea where she is, try and get onto her. She could do something silly. You mean the baby? She talked about getting rid of it. Um, look, I'm sorry to interrupt. Matt's obviously worried about Jill. Uh, well, uh, just a moment, Matt. Is there anything you know that could help? Well, I called her talking on the phone earlier. She was arranging something. I think she was writing some address down. Uh, hang on just a minute. Uh, Matt, Barbara says... I heard. If someone is helping, I've got a fair idea who it might be. She told me Wayne Hamilton offered. Oh. No, she wouldn't take any help from him. If she's desperate enough. Uh, uh, just a moment again, Matt, would you? What on earth are you doing? Oh, it's an old girl guide trick. Shows you what was written on the page above. It's not very good, I'm afraid. Oh, no! Mission's gone on the truck. At least he's got us this far. What's wrong? Joe's here. He's in the house. He's got a gun and he's making crazy threats. Hell, how did he find us? He followed you from Melbourne. I better call the police. Perro and Tony are with him. He sent me to find you. First sign of the police and he says it'll kill them. What, do you reckon he would? Yes, I think so. I've seen him mad before, but never like this. Fight. Yeah, come on, come on, it's gonna be okay, come on. So what do you think you'd do if I went in there? I don't know. Shoot, maybe. I'm gonna risk it, I suppose. Well, he's not nuts, at least I'll be able to talk him into letting Beryl and Tony go. He wants us both there. That's too bad, you stay back where it's safe. If you go in there without me, you haven't got a chance. He's angry and when he's like that, there's no talking to him. It's got to be both of us. I'm looking for Jill O'Donnell. I understand she's seeing the doctor this afternoon. Oh, she's with Dr. Now, if you'd like to take a seat. Uh, yeah, I must see her. I know this is very difficult, but would you mind telling her I'm here? My name is Fiona Thompson. I'm sorry, but when someone's inside... I know I'll... why she's here, and I must talk to her. Perhaps you'd like to speak with the gentleman who came with Mrs. O'Donnell. He's just popped out to get a magazine. Yes, I most certainly will, eventually. But right now, I want to see Jill. I'm sorry, I can't. Whatever your problem is, it'll have to wait until she comes out. 
Oh, here's the gentleman now. Perhaps he can help you. How could you arrange this? Of all people. You must have known what having a grandchild means to me. I don't know why you bothered coming, Patricia. I said it all before. What do you mean you've said it all before? You got hysterical and huffed out like an overgrown child. I think divorce is something that we ought to discuss. I'd like to throw her out, but of course, if you'd like to talk... And of course I don't. Things would be a lot easier if you weren't hovering. Oh, excuse me. You barged your way into my home. I'm staying put. If we're going to have a domestic, I think we ought to have it at home. Is that what you think this is? A, a domestic tip? We are splitting up, Patricia. I'm not going to change my mind, so you may as well leave. But it's all come out of nowhere. It's been building up for months. I was only trying to help well, you. Well, I don't want your help anymore. Now, go home. You're just making a fool of yourself. All right. You're so weak, I'm probably better off without you. Oh, don't look so smug. Has he told you who Andrew's mother is yet? Patricia. It's obviously a big mystery. I don't know what it is. Her name's Helen Green. Ring any bells? Ah, I can see that it does. Oh. Explain your way out of that one, darling. I can explain, Bobby. Well, it had better be damn good. want to see you, so if you'll excuse me. Look, I don't know what six months inside would have done to you, but I know what it did to me. So don't treat me as a joke. I learnt a lot of things in there, and I intend to use them. It'd be laughable if it wasn't so pathetic. Martin put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger because of you, and I won't be happy until you want to do the same. I mean it. You just don't want to listen, do you? I mean, you've got to see what you're doing. It's crazy. You're the one that wanted to talk, lover boy. I told you to be a waste of time. OK, OK. Look, if you feel that way, it's between you and me. Now, I'm the one you got it in for. Let, let, let the others go. No. You must have thought you were pretty smart when Tony set me up. Look, it, it was my idea. They had nothing to do with it. I don't care whose idea it was. You would have all had a pretty good laugh. It's not too funny now, is it? Don't hurt them. Please, Joe. I can just as easily start with you, Alice. I mean, I, I wanted to keep you to last, but I'll start with you if you make me. Thanks, Jerry. Won't be a tick then I'll head off to my place. Young Tony will be pleased to see you. You become quite a hero with him after what you did. Had to knock that out of him, won't I? <laughs> You're first, lover boy. You can do what you like with me, but my wife, she's got nothing to do with it. Anyone home? It's me, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry. Shut your mouth, boy. I'm glad here, mate. Look, 2020. Love is 
happen when you are young or old when it comes it comes from nowhere when it comes it changes your life sons and daughters love and laughter tears and sadness and Bye.